Welcome to Retro Arcade Reviews. My name is John, and in this episode, we will be reviewing the arcade classic, Forgotten Worlds. Forgotten Worlds is a side-scrolling shoot-em-up that was developed by Capcom in 1988. When you have a $5 million budget, the who's who's of arcade production, a state-of-the-art circuit board, one has to think, what really can go wrong? Apparently, a lot of things. And all this was news to me because I actually like the game, except for collecting Zenny and purchasing items at the item shop. I mean, I'm just not a big fan of that in arcade games. Also, similar to Strider and Osman, the game is guilty of having somewhat confusing and inconsistent dialogue at times. Other than that, I think the game was pretty cool for the time. It had a unique control panel, the backgrounds were beautiful, and the controls were smooth. It was like Contra with jetpacks. However, the game didn't sell well. According to an interview with Akira Yasuda, one of the designers of Forgotten Worlds, the game took two years to develop, which was a pretty long time. The shooter market was already saturated, and because of hardware limitations, they couldn't produce many machines. Yasuda's boss even attributed the game's poor sales to Yasuda's design decisions and asked him to apologize. Other development issues, according to Yoshiki Okamoto and Noritaka Funamizu, was that they really wanted to make an impression with the CPS-1 hardware, so they just packed it all in without realizing they did they didn't have enough completed enemy characters and since creating and programming enemy sprites was extremely time consuming, they had to reuse some quote unquote assets, but I think they mean sprites from sidearms in 1943 just to make it in time. So it's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly why Forgotten Worlds didn't sell well. It could have been one reason or a combination of different factors. In this game, you and our friend take control of two nameless super soldiers to go toe to toe against the evil god of destruction, Emperor Bios and his eight demigods. So you have to fight your way through nine stages of dust world inhabitants before you take on Bios. At your disposal, player one has a long range rifle and player two has a short range spread gun. The arcade control panel was different than your ordinary shooters because there was no fire or bomb button. There was your typical joystick and a roll switch. You can rotate the roll switch left or right to adjust the characters and satellites aim. Now if you rotate the character while firing, it will only rotate the satellites aim. If you don't press down and rotate the switch, it will not only rotate the satellites aim, but it will move its position around the player. I know. It sounds kind of complicated and it takes getting used to, but when you do get used to it, it's pretty freaking awesome. And you can use it to block projectiles as well. Pushing down on the roll switch will cause a mega crush attack, which kills all on screen enemies, but takes a portion of your life. Now, if you collect enough Zenny, you can purchase weapons, health, and or armor at the item shop which springs up at certain points in the stage. Because of the roll switch, I find it kind of difficult to play emulated and or home ports of the game. Even with controllers, using the right thumbstick in place of the roll switch for me is just not the same and it kind of takes some of the strategy away, but that's just me. Fun fact, Zenny is Capcom's currency and it's also used in games like Black Tiger, Gaia Master, Mega Man Battle Network, and Mega Man Legends. Forgotten Worlds was ported over to the Amiga, Amstrad CPC, Commodore 64, IBM compatible PC, TurboGrafx-16, Genesis, and the Sega Master System. It was also available on the Capcom Classics Collection for the PS2 and the Xbox, as well as Capcom Classics Collection Remix for the PSP. Artist Takashi Murakami had an exhibition in the New York Japan Society around 2005 by the name of Little Boy, referring to one of the atomic bombs dropped on Japan in World War II. In a nutshell, the exhibition displayed Japanese art after World War II as a means to display the infantilization of the Japanese culture and mindset. The theory was that this was caused by several factors ranging from post-trauma of atomic warfare and Western economic and political dependence. Basically, the art and culture currently embraced by the Japanese is kind of like this big coping mechanism of a post-war condition and I couldn't for some reason stop thinking about this while playing Forgotten Worlds. It just had the characteristics of the works displayed in the show, a post-apocalyptic world, mass destruction, and wastelands. Now why this is important is because some games capture an aspect of an age or generation, kind of like Russian attack and whether it be intentional or unintentional, it really doesn't matter because whether or not the creators of the game were directly involved in the war or not, the game still somewhat displays the cultural influence of a traumatic post-war condition Murakami was addressing in his exhibition. On that note, the game's still cool and if you have a chance of playing the original arcade cabinet, take full advantage of it because I don't think there's many working ones around and let me know what you think.